Assalamu alaikum. Okay, so what I had to do for this channel is create an email list. The reason why is because due to the nature of the content of this channel, I don't know when the content is going to just mysteriously disappear or this channel will be shut down. The email mail list is just for the followers or the subs so that you know where these things are just in case this mysteriously happens. So just go down to the link in the description of the video, click join email list, Put your email address in there, and boom, you're good to go. That means that I can also send you other information that I cannot post here on YouTube, and you'll also know where the channel is and where the content is in the event that it does disappear. Okay, let's cook. Okay, people, so I want to discuss a situation that's been kind of trending in the news about a sister by the name of Nicole Moore, who's suing Planned Parenthood alleging discrimination and wrongful termination. Now, Nicole Moore's complaint covers multiple years and more than a dozen employees, it says. Nicole Moore, in her position at Planned Parenthood, she was the former multicultural brand engagement director, okay? Now, Nicole Moore claims that she and other women of color at the National Planned Parenthood offices were routinely disbarred, dismissed, and given fewer opportunities than their white colleagues. When Nicole Moore complained about this treatment, she says the managers retaliated against her in a compare so severe that it landed her in the emergency room with an anxiety attack. Basically, they all got together. They formed white Voltron and went at her hard body so much that she ended up in the emergency room. I've heard of this before. OK. Now, the complaint contains anecdotes and from multiple employees and contractors hinting at tensions with racism within the organization that have bubbled under the surface for years. Okay, so people, first I want to say, I didn't make this to pick on Nicole Moore at all, um, even though it may seem like I'm kind of pointing at her and singling her out in this situation. Please don't think that. I'm using this situation because, I'm using this and I'm using her name because this situation represents a lot of things that our people go through, which she's going through at this place. Now, I have to say, I do not know Nicole Moore. But I know that she's a million percent correct in what she's saying and what she's alleging. How do I know this? Because Nicole Moore is people's, number one. Number two, because unlike a lot of people out here, unlike a lot of our people, and I believe in this situation, including this sister here, Nicole Moore, I know the opposition. I know who she's going at. I know who's giving her problems. I know how that works. Quite a few of our uh, sub subs on this channel, we know how it works. So that's how I know Nicole Moore is a thousand, a million, whatever number you want to put percent right in what she alleges. I know who she's suing. I know their bottom line, and I know that they don't deviate from their path, and they are steadfast in their religion, not just on Sundays. They're never going to take the gas off the pedal when it comes to their religion of white supremacy. These are this, these are the people that Nicole Moore is alleging, you know, did these things to her. These are, this is her opposition. If you know them, you know everything else. If you know their bottom line, it's the same story for everybody else. Same being Nicole Moore here. That's why I said this is not really just about Nicole Moore. It's about how they operate and what they do to our people. Okay? She is a victim here. Now, in this situation, at, the, at her job at Planned Parenthood, yes, Nicole Moore is a victim. She is correct about that, but she's also a victim because like many of our people, she was indoctrinated possibly by white ideologies from public school, you know, college, and she does not understand the system of white supremacy and how it works. I, 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 from, from looking into this situation with her, I kind of understand this. She, does, she didn't understand what she was getting into. She didn't understand what she was getting into, how it works. And like a lot of our people, she was bamboozled into believing some things that aren't true. And that also comes from a lot of our people lying to her as well. This is why I'm not really, really into lying to the youth and telling them things and giving them this whole we are the world type stuff. Give them the bottom line and the truth historically. And that's it. And they know how to make the decisions. They smart. OK, so. Basically, in this situation, this young lady, Nicole Moore, she was probably raised to understand that everything that comes from them, regardless of how nice they present it, regardless of what kind of package they wrap it up in, 
It will never be for us, and it will always be detrimental to us. They play the long game. A lot of our people aren't raised to understand that. So here we have this organization, Planned Parenthood, that Nicole Moore is working at. An organization that's grounded in the religion of white supremacy. An organization with a bunch of bitter, liberal, Caucasian women working there, you know, whose ultimate goal, whose ultimate goal is to destroy our community through our women, which, will, which, which ultimately, you know, is a detriment to our community, whether it be the women or the men. In this case, Planned Parenthood, the women. So you got a bunch of liberal, bitter Caucasian women working at this place, harassing Nicole Moore and other black women. But this is Planned Parenthood. I mean, they're, they're about as, I mean, does it get any more, you know what I mean? They're grounded in this, this religion of white supremacy. You know what I'm saying? Yes, they have always presented themselves as, this, as if their goal was to help black women and they were for black women's rights, which is why Nicole Moore was hired. You know what I'm saying? That's what her position was supposed to be. This is why one of the reasons why she was hired. They want to present themselves as if they're for progress or they're trying to help. You know, they're trying to be multicultural and this, this and that and help out the black community. Not true. Not true. But the thing about people like Nicole Moore, right, in this situation with Planned Parenthood, although she probably was confused, she still has some access to her humanity. You know, she still has some access to humanity. She's like, hold up. You know, y'all not treating me right. And I could tell that it's due to my race. Facts. This is why they were not treating her right. Simply because it was due to her race. You know, but the bottom line in the entire narrative of this organization is not to treat black women right due to their race. It does not present help. It does not offer a solution for black women. Nicole Moore was hired to be their Negro sock puppet to do all that work for them and push their bottom line and, devi and, and deceive her people. This is what she was hired for, y'all. This is what when we when we are in these positions, we're putting these positions. That's what we are hired for. Not just Nicole Moore. I'm talking about whenever we take these positions. You know, now, just because I feel that Nicole Moore was bamboozled and confused about the bottom line of these white supremacist organizations. You know, doesn't mean that she shouldn't go at him and do what she's doing. I, I salute her for that. You know, I salute her for that, because the only way to fix this is to give Nicole Moore and any other black women who are named in this thing a bag of money. And I hope they get it. I'm all for I'm all for, uh, uh, you know, when these things happen, the people who stand up for themselves digging in their pockets, regardless of the situation in which I'm getting to the whole bottom line and the foundation of this organization. They still need to go ahead at them and get what they're supposed to get. So I, I got to salute Nicole Moore for this. You know, she's able Somebody who's able to stand up for herself, you know, other than a lot of people who sit back and just do nothing. They act more docile. And she's going at the big engine. A lot of our people, they sit back for years at these jobs and make excuses, do absolutely nothing and push the goalposts back and say, oh, well, this is better than this. And everything that these these white people who had job presented them at their jobs presented them that's racist. They always look at something else and say, oh, well, that's worse. Well, that's worse. Well, that's worse, you know, and do this forever. So salute to Nicole Moore for standing up, you know. But again, this isn't just Planned Parenthood. This is all of our workplaces. This is the state office, Jiffy Lou, whatever, a pharmaceutical company, law enforcement, working at Target, in the military, whatever. That's how it works. You know, that's how it works. So, again, I'm just using Nicole Moore and her story as an example. But you notice how when a black person actually still has some access to their humanity. And even if they are confused about the mission of these white supremacist organizations or the mission of why they were hired, what they were hired for, which I believe Nicole Moore, I said that I believe she was confused about why she was really hired and the mission of this organization here. Everything naturally just falls apart for them. So you don't even have to tell these people like Nicole Moore anything. If they have some access to their humanity left, which she does, which is why she knew something was wrong and she was protesting at the job, you know, because she still has some access to her humanity. 
People like that, even if they confuse, when they go into these places, their body always fights against them. Their mind always fights against them. You know what I mean? They start getting tripped up in the job. They start tripping. They get tripped up in the mission. And they like, hold up. This, 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 and this. But they doing this. It just is never going to work with somebody who still has access to their humanity left. You know what I mean? So even these places and these people who are hired for something where they don't even understand the bottom line of these white supremacist organizations, they go in blindly you know, being deceived and they take these jobs, if they still have some access to their humanity, they get caught up in the whole job situation to where their body and their mind fights against it naturally. You know what I'm saying? You don't even have to tell them anything. You don't even have to tell them anything. Yup, you were confused, as you can always tell, because when our people get in these positions, we are surprised and we are shocked. That's how we could tell when somebody's confused. We could tell somebody was confused from jump is because when they go in these positions like Nicole Moore, who was hired, you know, for, you know, a kind of a sock puppet position, a position to deceive black women. And it's like we're going to make it look like we're all about diversity and we want to get in the minds of these black women and present to them something, deceive them and act like we're for the progress or helping black women. They hire Nicole Moore and other people and. When they get in these positions, you can tell they have access, some access to their humanity because when they try to do these jobs, they, they get surprised and shocked. You know, they get surprised and shocked. And again, you don't have to tell them anything. They have some access to their humanity left where they're, they're going to their mind and their body and everything is going to fight against it. It's going to be like an internal battle that they eventually are going to have to come to. They just going to have to admit like, no, this ain't right. It always happens. Now, a person who's not confused, somebody who's not confused about the bottom line and what's going on, right, with these white supremacist organizations and their mission, they're going to do one of two things. They're going to do one of two things. Now, one thing they'll do is they'll get into the job knowing what it's all about. They'll know the mission. They'll know the bottom line. They know, okay, this is to, to deceive my people. I know what's going on. You know, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to get in here. And I'm going to I'm going to work with these white folks. I'm not going to debate it. I know what they're doing because I don't care. I'm all about me and getting my money. That's it. That's one person. You know, Nicole Moore, as you can see, she couldn't do that. That's how you know when somebody is confused about what they were initially hired for. And they're confused about the bottom line and, and which is the religion of white supremacy. So you have one person who will go in. They'll know all this. They're like, okay, I'm willing to do that to my people. Yeah, I do that. Nicole Moore wasn't that. You can tell, you know. Or you have the black person who takes the job and they play, you know, Spook Who Sat By The Door, the classic book written by Brother Sam Greenlee. If you haven't read that book, check it out, you know. This is the type of person who gets into these jobs. They know what's going on. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play Spook That Sat By The Door. I'm going to get my money. I'm going to get these checks. I'm going to play these white folks. Then I'm going to get up out of here. You know, that type of person. You know, and, and the thing about that is playing them it, it's not hard to do, yo. It's not hard to these white people in these positions, they not smart. Just the fact that these white people think that most of us are so dumb and they've been that been around a lot of us just cooning and acting dumb for a long time, it's not hard to outsmart smart outsmart them because they're gonna have low expectations for how you're gonna think and respond anyway. So it's not hard to outsmart white people, yo. You know? And they don't they do not know how to adjust when they're presented with different challenges without getting emotional and mad. You know, they're not smart at all. Yo, it's, it's not hard to outsmart them. If you start to outsmart them in these jobs, in these positions, what they'll do is they're going to respond emotionally because that's all they know how to do. They're not going to go ahead and think Pat, because they never had to do that. Because, again. Again, what they're used to doing and solving problems is what? I said it before in previous videos, just taking people up out of here. OK, I'll solve this. I'll do this. It's never no any strategic thinking or creativity and deep thought involved because they never had to do this. They always been able to get get away with doing things like this. So they're not hard to outsmart. yo. it's easy to outsmart them. y'all. OK, y'all. So back to this article, listen to a statement that Planned Parenthood made. It says, in a statement, Planned Parenthood General Counsel 
Susan Manning said the organization strongly disputed Nicole Moore's allegations and categorically denied her claims of discrimination. She said the group would vigorously defend against this suit and welcome the opportunity to share the complete picture. She says Planned Parenthood Federation of America's top priority for our dedicated staff is building a culture of diversity across the organization to fulfill our mission of reproductive health for all, she said. Our staff is at the core of who we are, and we work every day to ensure a safe and, and welcoming, w welcoming environment. Same cookie-cutter nonsense that all these white folks say when somebody is alleging uh, discrimination or workplace racism or dealing with racial battle fatigue and finally decide to do something. It's like they all have the same cookie cutter thing to say. You know, this is what they all say when they are challenged for practicing their religion in these ways, okay? Now listen to this part, y'all. Listen to this in this article. It says, multiple news outlets have also reported on instances of alleged racism at the organization, including an August 2020 article from BuzzFeed News entitled, Employees Are Calling Out Major Reproductive, Reproductive Rights Organizations for Racism and Hypocrisy. The BuzzFeed News published a follow-up article in October of that year about an internal audit the company had conducted, which found that employees of color experienced regular acts of racism, but that there was no meaningful consequence or accountability when they reported it to HR, of course. These people never like to take accountability. Let me finish, okay? The audit also noted that black employees were placed under greater scrutiny than white colleagues below, I mean, th than white colleagues both in terms of how black staff are perceived at work as well as the number of hours they work. A consultant who presented the findings at an internal meeting said there were Lots of stories of black employees being expected to put in extraordinary hours of work, even amid personal crisis, according to BuzzFeed. The BuzzFeed article plays a role in Moore's, Nicole Moore's lawsuit because of how she claims the company responded to it. Okay. At a meeting after the article was published, Nicole Moore claims Senior Vice President Melanie Newman did not address the complaints of discrimination but instead issued a warning to whoever had leaked a recording of the presentation. We are going to find out who did this, says uh, uh, Moore claims Newman said. Newman, a black woman. So basically this, this chick, Newman, she's basically saying we're going to find out who did this. We're not going to confront the racism or the things that are in this. Who said something, you know? And of course, this chick Newman, who is a black woman, declined to comment. So she's she's one of their Negro gatekeepers, okay? This chick Newman, all right? So there you go. That's typical. These white supremacist organizations who have a history of workplace discrimination, they always hire some sock puppet Negro, diversity calendar smile and shine bone, that they pay more than they pay the other black people to do this work. So this is a high up. So when you see these organizations and you go applauding these, you know, these black people who are in a certain position. Oh, the VP of this or the first black person. Listen, man. Those people could do whatever they want to do with their life. Whatever, whatever. But what I'm saying is these are just some sock puppet diversity calendar smiling shine bone Negroes who are there just to put on the monthly calendar smile and keep all the other Negroes in check. For when one of them buck like Nicole Moore, they'll go get that black person like her and say, how can they be racist? Look at my position. I'm a strong black woman. I'm a strong black man. I never had no issues. We all dealt with these people at these jobs, yo. They do the same thing for all of them. That's why I'm not quick to applaud anybody who moves up in a predominantly white organization, any, any black person. I don't applaud them when they move up to these ranks. I'm not mad at them. They can do whatever they want, but I'm not going to salute you because these white folks decided that you were the right one to move as to the VP position or the director position or this, this and that. I'm not clapping for you, but you do whatever you want. I don't care, you know, but I'm not clapping for you. But 
We tend to always applaud these Negroes. These would be the same people who are in these positions to make sure that you don't advance, to make sure that your your child, when they bring your child or your nephew or your neighbor or your niece or whoever in your relative, when they bring up some discrimination that's going on at the job, this same person that you're reposting or putting in these algorithms on social media and clicking like, this same black person that we're applauding, they're going to be the ones to make sure they block you from progress when you finally decide to get up and speak about racial discrimination and then practicing their religion. You know what I'm saying? So that's typical what this woman did. That's typical. You know, she's not there to see about the discrimination that they talk about. She's there to find out, oh, who said this? But anyway, Nicole Moore goes on to talk about complaints that were ignored by black people. So black people made complaints. They were ignored at Planned Parenthood. Nicole Moore says that uh, derogatory things have been going on from white folks wanting to pet black women's hair at events, you know, and the white people being mad when the black person said, no, you can't pet my hair or touch my hair or whatever, you know, to white male employees saying that they're a white man trapped in a black woman's body or a black woman, I'm sorry, trapped in a white woman's body. You know, you got these old weirdos doing this dumb, you know, cross-dressing LGGG stuff. You know those guys. Those, You know they always got one or two of them, you know, liberal white guys walking around like a duck and trying to act like he's, you know, outdoing black women and all this other stuff. So things like that. This, uh, she had said things like that in her complaint about, you know, a white man at the job saying something like that. You know, and this is Planned Parenthood, y'all. It's Margaret Sanger, one of the most disgusting, knuckle-dragging beasts in the history of American history. This is the organization that she started. They only went against what she was saying, and they only denounced or tried to denounce her ideologies when they were called out, y'all. You know what I'm saying? These are the same people. This is the same mission. Nothing changes. This is within their religion. We take these positions and if we're confused, we get caught up. Either we get caught up because we still have some access to our humanity like like Nicole Moore or we know what we're doing and we like, F it, I'm going to get this money. I don't care what they're doing. I know that this is here to deceive my people or do this, this, this and that, you know, and play the long game and be be destructive to black people. But I'm going to do it anyway because I don't care. Or or is that, you know what I mean? In this case, Nicole Moore wasn't that. You know, her body started to fight against it mentally, you know, physically, all that. She ended up in the hospital, which I've heard. heard, I've heard about this happening to people before dealing with racial battle fatigue of these jobs. They go into the hospital, man. You know what I mean? And some people try to say they think that it only happens with people who don't have a family or they just have you know, they're by themselves. No, nah, man, I heard about this happen with men, you know, who had families at home, wives and kids and families ending up in the hospital through the racial battle fatigue, you know, dealing with these knuckle dragging beasts and these white supremacists at these jobs. It happens, man. I mean, it ain't going to happen to somebody like me. It may not happen to you, but everybody built different. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, these people are doing what they're doing at these jobs. Anyway, y'all, let's talk about a solution. And please get in the comments. Give us some solutions to these situations that Nicole Moore is in. You know. Now. We got to talk about a solution because. The majority of our people go into these jobs with the same mindset and the lack of historical understanding, just like Nicole Moore. Okay. now what can we do? I believe that one thing we could do is learn about our culture. From our culture. You know, learn about our culture from people from us, you know, history, black American history, descendants of slaves in America, you know, Jim Crow, not just slavery, because people like to talk about slavery all the time. That's the only thing. They crazy. We got stuff that happened in 1980 that was worthy of them paying money to repair it. So it ain't just about slavery. That's one. 
You can talk about Jim Crow, redlining, all these other things, these Tuskegee experiments, and all these other experiments they don't even tell us about, all kinds of stuff, the crack era, the Department of Education, you know, whatever. We have to, I think that we have to learn about our culture and things from people from our culture through books and documentaries and stuff like that. And I'm talking about outside of R&B music, football, and, you know, cooking and Essence magazine and stuff like that. You know, real stuff. Not that old superficial, you know, black stuff. I'm talking about real stuff. Then, like, again, number two, this goes with what I just said. We have to read books by people from our culture that aren't very popular. Not that popular stuff. You know, not that trendy stuff that somebody decides to make a movie about finally because they're going to make some money or things they want you to know. I'm talking about we got to read books, you know, by people that aren't popular books, the ones they try to keep hidden, the ones they try to hike the price up on, you know, like Barbara Sizemore type stuff, you know, one hundred fifty dollars a book and all that other stuff, you know, or other people where they try to, you know, suppress it and not want you to know this is the stuff we need to be reading. You know, we have to learn about the history of black people in America and what the government has done and what it is, the bottom line. There are no friends when it comes to things, Republican, Democrat, liberal, conservative, all white people trying to do the same thing with the same, with the same mission, same outcome, except they take different routes to get to it. We have been bamboozled into believing that no, one is better than the other. No, it's not. One plays the long game, one plays the short game. You know? We have to understand what an American liberal and a conservative is. It's just, it's just being, you know, one is just being liberal with how they, prom- prom- with how they present white supremacy. The other one is just trying to conserve white supremacy by all means in an overt manner. That's it. They're both the same. One is being liberal with how they present white supremacy. And the other one is trying to, to conserve it. The liberal and the conservative. They're trying to conserve it by all means in an overt manner, which means, you know, the people who are willing to go out there, you know, the majority of the people who support Trump. That's what I'm talking about. Not saying the other one, and the other one is the Biden guy. The other one is the Obama, the Bush, I'm sorry, the, uh, what's his name? The Billary guy, the Bill Clinton. That's the liberal. Y'all know what it is by now. Y'all know what I'm talking about, man, because from what you experience, you haven't experienced anything any different. The rest is you just having running off of opium batteries and just living in never never land. You have not experienced anything different. I don't care who you are if you're a black American. And also, I think that another way that we can prevent these things from happening is to understand that just because you got a job, you graduated top of your class, you went to school, you were hired by these white people, your people happy for you, they had a party for you, this and that does not mean that the white community will ever change their bottom line, which is to practice their religion of white supremacy. They're not going to change it. You know what I mean? So you might have got something. You might be happy. You may be about to make some money. Your people may be happy for you. There's other people happy for you. But the bottom line is the bottom line. You know, one Negro don't change the program. And that's the thing that a lot of people start to think, man. Oh, uh, uh, Radio Shack. They got a black VP now. OK. Oh, did you hear about it? Uh, such and such company. You know, General Mills has a black. She's a, the first black woman. Such and such. OK. So. You still falling for the okie doke, whatever. They're never going to change what they have to do. They're just trying to present it differently and trying to be a little more strategic, strategic in what they do. But. Even that's played out. Yo, like, we already know that. Most, I mean, come on, man. But anyway, I hope that Nicole Moore and everybody named in this suit at Planned Parenthood, I don't care if you work at Planned Parenthood, the DMV, or anywhere, I hope that you win, get your money, because salute to you people. You're strong enough to have you know, the heart to stand up and fight something, you know what I mean? Regardless of what, how you got there, at least you know something's wrong and you're going to stand up and fight against it. And money is the only way to solve this. Don't let people tell you it's not all about the money. Yes, it is. This is America. The only way to fix this issue with Nicole Moore, whoever else is on his suit, you who might be listening or any other suit is to give them money. Point blank, period. All right, y'all. Easy.